Um, Nancy O'Brien is a certified yoga therapist specializing in pain and challenging medical conditions. Um, and ever since yoga therapy supported her recovery from a nearly fatal illness, the former New York Daily News editor has endeavored to make yoga a sustainable component of healthcare, creating programming and teaching in hospitals, clinics, and community centers, and training yoga teachers to work safely with people with medical conditions. Nancy will be covering ways to have a compassion to have compassion for yourself through accessible mind body practices. Thank you, Nancy, for presenting today. Oh, thank you, Christine, for having me, Roberta, Dem, thank you all. And uh, <clears throat> I just, before we start, want to acknowledge that uh, the fact that we're all here together represents that you are supporting yourself in these challenges with these these challenges and brain fog and fatigue are are just two of the very challenging conditions that uh, that you live with that we live with i don't have lupus but i do live with brain fog and and chronic fatigue and so the uh, practices and the information that I'll be sharing today come out of about 15 years of experience. And so you're getting the, the gold standards of coping strategies that the mind-body space offers. So uh, on one hand, I wanted to say, I'm sorry that, that you're experiencing the conditions that draw you here today. On the other hand, I'm very happy and honored really to be here with you and Roberta's incredible visionary work that she's done. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, please, uh, next slide, please, Dem. The information presented here is for general education, not meant as a substitute for your physician's guidance. If you are experiencing brain fog, uh, fatigue is, is more common with lupus and, and other associated conditions, but um, it really would be good to discuss this with your medical team, your physician. And then in addition, check in first with your medical team about the activities mentioned in this presentation. Um, next screen, please. Look at this image. Um, an artist, Jennifer Walker, was asked um, by Creaky Joints, which is a wonderful entity um, on social media for, for folks with inflammatory issues. Uh, they asked her to share some of her art pieces and this quote, I think, may resonate. She says, when I created this piece, this is exactly what I felt like. I was losing myself, melting down. If we were in the room together and I could see you, I feel like, like everybody would kind of, or most of you would kind of nod and say, yes, yes, I relate to this piece. Next screen, please. Over 81% of those with lupus, both active and inactive, will experience fatigue that will abil uh, impair their ability to live normally. Unfortunately, 61% don't feel refreshed after a night of sleep. And that really, as we'll discuss in a couple of slides, is, is the difference between fatigue and tiredness. If you're not feeling refreshed after a night's sleep, then it's fatigue. And we'll talk about why that happens. And yet it's often overlooked by both patients and physicians. So I did say before that fatigue is, is a more expected symptom that we all may be you know, challenged by, but definitely talk about the fatigue with your medical team. Um, it was interesting to me that while I was doing this PowerPoint, some of the best information came from an SLE workshop in 2017 from Dr. Melanie Harrison. And uh, I highly recommend that, uh, that workshop if you can see it on recording. I think we have a link at the end. Next screen, please. 80% of those with lupus complain of cognitive problems uh, that interrupt their life. And Dr. Harrison 
mentioned, these may sound familiar to you, forgetting what you're supposed to buy at the supermarket, which feels fairly normal until it gets kind of regular. Forgetting where to pick up your children, a sense of insecurity because of the inability to depend on your memory and on your mind. A loss of independence, afraid that if you try to do something, it will not be done right, which contributes to that insecurity then avoiding activities because of that doubt, anxiety, depression, sleep phobia. Again, this is from Dr. Harrison. Next slide, please, Stem. Other possible symptoms of brain fog include difficulty with short-term memory, things you just, the why am I in this room? What, what am I, what am I? What did I need to get? Difficulty finding words, which you may notice with me because I do experience brain fog. Difficulty communicating. And that is upsetting because you're trying to say something and you're not able to find the words and then it just becomes like too much trouble. Embarrassment over forgetting or struggling for the words. Withdrawal then from communication, socializing and relationships poor self-esteem, isolation, and fear. Anybody who wants to comment on this, please go ahead and do so in the chat if this sounds familiar to you. Next slide, please, Stem. So with COVID and brain fog, and I'm sure most of you have heard that COVID does have its own brain fog uh, symptoms that are, are disturbing. So lupus has its own mechanism that underlies, uh, researchers think and doctors think, uh, the brain fog that is attached to lupus. And it's related to inflammation. Um, Dr. Avindra Nath, who is another person, um, she's with the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, who's done a lot of work on brain fog and COVID. And basically she's saying we're seeing a new virus, COVID, creating the same old problem. So with lupus, you have the problem, but there may be different mechanisms for causing it. In COVID, what they're finding in the research is the virus itself may affect the linings of the blood vessels. That's throughout the body, which is why the symptoms are so broad spread, but also the blood vessels in the brain. Next slide, please. So 20 to 30% of the people who have COVID develop persistent brain fog during the three months after COVID. That doesn't mean that it stops after three months, but that in the study, they saw that, you know, a third of the people, basically a fourth to a third of the people have these brain fog conditions after they've had COVID. And so doctors, the medical field is, is, is researching, funding is going into this, progress is being made in terms of the causes, um, but they don't have the answers yet. And basically their recommendations are, for the brain fog, small sessions of movement. Uh, you may have that experience of being so tired that you're really not able to, to do much in terms of movement, walking, exercise, that kind of thing. But what they're finding is that small sessions, you know, five minutes, uh, two minutes, you know, are, are more helpful at kind of being able to capture the energy that you do have available than, you know, trying to, to do something for a longer uh, time. Rest, absolutely key, and support. Social support, talking to your friends and, and family about the situation, your need for rest, your confusion, all of these things, and finding support there. And also then these uh, compassionate de-stressing practices like meditation. And we'll, and we'll have a couple of those that we'll experience together today. Next slide, please, Dem. So one of the things that happens with lupus is that pain itself makes the concentration difficult. 
this is something that's happened more recently in, in recent decades, in the recent century as opposed to earlier, where pain is being recognized almost, in fact, as a disease in itself. And the effects that the pain has on our energy levels and how it interplays in a lupus uh, and related conditions uh, diagnosis is becoming more and more recognized. So when it's difficult to remember and you're having to, you know, struggle through pain to try to remember something, then you end up with brain fog and fatigue combined. And that can sometimes be connected to the fact that you're struggling with pain. So helping to address the pain itself can sometimes have some benefit to the brain fog and fatigue. Next slide, please. So here's where we're talking about the difference between fatigue and fire, tiredness. So you feel refreshed when you get up from a good night's sleep, then that's that you were tired. If you don't feel refreshed after a nap or a night's sleep, then it's fatigue and it can be a frequent or even constant compassion with lupus as I'm sure many of you experience. Go ahead and next slide, please. So when we lose sleep because of flares, pain, worry, depression, which is, is also common with the struggles that we have and even the medications, which uh, sometimes contribute to losing sleep, then here are the effects. And sometimes we underestimate the need for the sleep and fail to prioritize the sleep itself. You get poorer judgment, difficulty concentrating, less motivation for even those small sessions of movement. The reflexes may be slower, less interest in socialization. And as we know, when you're withdrawing from family and friends, then that can lead to, you know, a sense of isolation, not getting the support you need, and even depression. And physical and mental burnout from repeated lack of sleep. Next slide, please. So we need to acknowledge that lupus itself contributes to our fatigue, which also contributes to, can contribute to our brain fog. Lupus is taking up the energy that our body has available by just trying to heal that in itself takes energy. The medications that our systems have to process um, which are, are highly, you know, complex, really, with the immune system and with the treatment on a cellular basis, on a systemic basis. When you have pain, that in itself uses up your energy, your focus, and your, your concentration. Of course, the musculoskeletal challenges, the constant immune system output. Just imagine all of these drains or uses, I should say, as opposed to drains on your energy. And, and you won't be as surprised that you have some fatigue and confusion and difficulty remembering. Organs striving to function. And then just circulation, digestion, breathing, all of those things take up energy. And uh, when we have lupus and we're actively treating or dealing with the conditions, then that in itself takes energy. Next slide, please. So the energy is needed to deal with the mental, physical, and emotional requirements of lupus. The energy that the body decides where it needs to go day and night. Next slide, please. So here's our choice. With the mind-body practices, and the key word here is compassion, um, you can choose to honor your body's choices. And that's kind of a choice instead of saying, oh, 
I'm so tired. I hate this. My body is failing me. You know, the, the body is trying so hard to function and deal with the medications and the diagnosis and the conditions, trying to, to balance its immune system. And we're saying, oh, bad body. So one of the things that we can do is cherish the body for putting our healing, our balanced health picture above everything else. So we may feel tired, we may, you know, we may feel fatigued, but that gives us an opportunity really to say to ourselves, thank you. Thank you for spending this energy in the places that helps me to deal with my condition. So you have the power to support your body's efforts to heal and function. Now, this isn't a cure-all. This isn't saying that everything is, you just do yoga and everything will be honky-dory. It's just that there are mind-body practices that can help reduce our stress and that can contribute to just a, a, a routine that allows us to feel more compassion and to give ourselves more support than if we are lambasting our body for its, its, its inability to get out of bed sometimes. So relaxing, supportive mind-body practices, the research is showing more and more, are able to help, especially by reducing our stress, by giving support opening up the nervous system. So instead of being in a chronic state of fear and, and tension, we can kind of open up the body and allow it to do what it knows how to do, do what it wants to do, the body, the mind, and the heart. So that energy that we free up with these mind-body practices by relaxing or just taking a little pause in the day can help go into reducing the stress itself. And the stress, as we know, contributes to our symptoms. Not that it's all that is doing the symptoms, you know, making up the symptoms, but that a dealing with our stresses can help. That's what the research shows. Next slide, please. So mind-body practices for fatigue breathing practices. And I'm seeing more and more in the mainstream media and articles and, you know, the lupus.org page that these mindful breathing practices are more and more recommended. We'll, we'll practice one or two of them. Intention. So uh, taking a deep breath and having intention of compassion for yourself or gratitude. Thinking of perhaps you've heard of this practice before, like three things that you feel grateful for. You can just think of three of them off the top of your head right now. And then every now and then throughout your day and throughout your night, take a nice breath and think of those three things that can be the same. So you don't have to think each time, or you can just, you know, think of what you may be grateful for at this moment. Gentle, supported, mindful movement. Meditation, many meditations, we're going to do some of those. The deep relaxation that we'll experience at the end, guided healing visualizations, and the deep relaxation that we'll experience at the end, HSS has kindly recorded a few of those um, by me, and we have the links uh, for them so that you can re-experience them if you'd like to in the HSS video library. And then in terms of yoga, there's restorative yoga, gentle yoga, yoga for arthritis and chronic pain, um, accessible yoga, therapeutic yoga. These are all types of yoga that really are um, led by teachers who are looking to uh, support you in these difficult circumstances. Next slide, please. So a practice of compassion, everybody move around a little bit, get comfortable. And let's just take in a nice deep breath. If you know three-part breath, expand the belly, lower ribs, upper chest, and exhale, draw the ribs in, the lower ribs, the belly into the center of the body, three-part breath. As you breathe in, imagine 
who you can feel compassion for just naturally. Just very easy to feel compassion for someone or some group and just summon that up right now. Breathe in and just be with that person or that group in your heart. And as you exhale, send your intention of relief to that person or those people. Inhale. Co-mingle with that sense, that very human sense of compassion. And as you exhale, send that intention of relief, of relief from pain, from brain fog, from fatigue to that person, that group. Now, switch out the image of that person or group with your own image. I know it's hard to, to practice compassion for yourself sometimes, so this is just one way you might try to do it. So as you breathe in now with that same feeling of compassion, as you exhale, send the intention of relief to yourself. Inhale. Feel that compassion. Connect to how that felt when you were imagining the other person, the other group and switch out that image to being yourself and now send that intention with the exhalation of relief to yourself. Good. So that was a practice of self-compassion real quick. And anytime we do even a quick intervention like this, we are pausing and adding to the de-stressing. Even a short one like that, you may feel the difference even from that bit of self-compassion. Um, next slide, please. So for brain fog, what we would really benefit from potentially is trying to be present in the moment. So focusing on the breath can be a very effective way to do that. Let's try it now. Inhale, I'm breathing in, exhale, I'm breathing out. Allow yourself to be as present as possible in these clothes, in this chair, uh, on this day, and just let everything else recede, whatever happened before, whatever's gonna happen later today, and be present. I'm gonna go ahead and ring this bell just to give us a little focus. So inhale and exhale and just be present. The sound of the bell lasts a lot longer than we expect, but it's nice to try to focus on simply being present with it. A bell can help. Some uh, mantra, may I be happy, you know, things that, that you repeat. Visualization meditations are also powerful and you may resonate with them more so than something like the breath. So let's all just imagine right now that we're a mountain. And this is a very fundamental yoga pose, mountain pose, where we just become a mountain. So wherever you are from the waist down, feel heavy, surrounded by bedrock, like the mountain below ground. And from that support, as long as it's comfortable, and if it's not comfortable, like perhaps a little bit of reclining or support behind your back or under your arms would be helpful to make you more comfortable. Inhale and imagine that you're rising from that base, that bedrock. And as you exhale, a mountain waterfall just sends tension and discomfort down. Just that visualization of rinsing through the head, the neck, the shoulders the chest, the belly, the legs. Imagine yourself as a mountain. Choose your mountain. Still, powerful, majestic inhale. And exhale, being a mountain. Good. So as many meditations go, this box breath that we're going to learn now is practiced by uh, Navy SEALs. And they use it for stress. So it's kind of a tried and true practice. Box breath three, four, five. And the instructions for this are, are deeper into the uh, PowerPoint, which I hope you have access to later so that you can 
read, um, or you could just uh, Google box breath 345 and you'll find it. So we're gonna trace a box in front of us like this, and we're gonna do inhale and hold our breath based on where we are tracing the box. So watch the first time, inhale, two, three, Hold that breath as you trace across the top of the box. Two, three, four. Trace down the side of the box. Two, three, four, five. And then finish off the bottom of the box. If it's uncomfortable to move either hand, then visualize the movement and that will carry you through the practice. So get very comfortable. Support yourself if you'd like in any way that feels good. And of course you're there in your home. If you wanna recline, put your feet up, anything that's comfortable, um, please support yourself in doing that, which in itself is a practice of self-compassion. And so we're gonna take a hand if possible and inhale two, three, as we trace up the side of the box, hold that breath two, three, four, across the top of the box. Exhale, two, three, four, five, down the side of the box and finish up as you hold the breath, tracing across the bottom of the box. So what this does is it takes advantage of the fact that research shows and it's known now that the longer the exhalation compared to the inhalation, the more powerful the signal your brain is getting that right now you are able to de-stress. You're not running from a fire you know, the chronic stress that we live in all the time is less active. And so let's try this again. You can switch hands if you want. Inhale, two, three, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five, and hold. One more time. Inhale, two, three, across the top, two, three, four, Exhale, two, three, four, five, and hold and relax. This is so handy. Your plane gets canceled, you're in the airport. You can visualize that you're tracing the box so as not to draw attention to yourself. Doctor's office, waiting too long, in a line, waiting on hold on, for the insurance company. All these aggravations that we have, box breath. Because then instead of sitting there fretting or laying there unable to sleep, you are doing something that is benefiting your nervous system, which contributes to benefiting uh, your whole self. Next page, please, Dem. So this is the three-part breath that we've already done. I'm going to go ahead and change it. It's basically expand the belly. Lower, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and move forward, but basically the three-part breath is belly, lower ribs, upper chest. Exhale, upper chest comes in, lower ribs come in, belly to the spine like a sit-up. Next slide, please. And the next slide, that's the same three-part breath. All right, box breath, here's the directions. So um, we just did it. Next slide, please. Mini rests. The artist that we saw at the beginning on the on the creaky joints um, site, uh, social networking community, this is a quote from her that she talked about in doing the art and dealing with her fatigue from her arthritis symptoms. Listening to my body is most important. Listening to my body's signals stopping when I need to stop, resting when I need to rest. And so taking breaks throughout the day, even for a few minutes, can give us that pause that allows our nervous system to just kind of take a step back. And that helps throughout the day and throughout the night to keep us from spiraling into pain, depression, isolation, not moving, not talking to people uh, and aggravating our condition. 
Of course, there are times when we absolutely feel like all we can do is just put the blankets over our heads and rest. And that is an important thing to listen to. Try to listen and respond to your body. It's just like petting a puppy dog or your cat. It makes you feel better when you are realizing I'm tired, I'm going to rest. Take breaks throughout the day. No screens, no food, no reading. Focusing on your breath can help. Next slide, please mini rests. This is what yoga looks like. Those yoga types that I read before, it's no longer just about turning yourself into a pretzel. This is restorative yoga. This is yoga for arthritis and chronic pain. And this is a supported forward bend. So this would be an alternative in a restorative yoga class to someone who has difficulty with forward bends or needs not to do forward bends or has pain, um, supporting yourself in a way that allows you to get benefits from a forward bend as, as these women are doing, but also to be able to do it in a way that supports you and allows you to feel better. So I'm just mentioning this in case you have access or would like to seek access. Um, to this kind of therapeutic yoga. It's the kind of yoga that I teach weekly at Hospital for Special Surgery. All right, next slide, please, Dem. Um, this is an interesting picture because it includes the diaphragm. The diaphragm is like kind of like an umbrella uh, attached all along the base of the ribs, front, back, side to side. And so that's the diaphragm at the top. And perhaps, depending on your device, you can see little holes. Those are holes as the diaphragm, which creates our breath, it goes up and down like a jellyfish. And as it does that, those, the, the veins and the esophagus for digestion and circulation move are, are through those two holes. So as the diaphragm goes up and down, the circulation and the respiration are stimulated by the movement of the diaphragm. And so you are able with these deep, these breathing practices to, to benefit your circulation and digestion just because the, the diaphragm is moving a little bit more dynamically than when you're just doing your usual breath. Also, you can see those muscles that go from the tailbone up to the side of the back. And, um, and so you are able then to see that just in a gent, not you wouldn't do this much of a side stretch, but anytime you just gently stretch to the side, we can do that right now just by, um, bringing the elbows out to the side, the fingers to the shoulders, and just dipping one elbow down, just very, very gently. You can even move a half an inch, and then pressing down through your feet and sits bones and pelvis, come on back up, take a breath, dip to the other side, and you are bringing yourself the benefit of this side stretch, and then come on back up. So that's a very simple and beneficial movement if you'd like to try it. It just gets deep in around the spine and around the diaphragm. And this is a case where you would ask your medical team if it's safe for you to do this before you try it. Okay, next slide, please, Dem. Um, a reclining side stretch uh, while you're watching TV. You can just put a pillow around underneath one armpit and just lean into it a little bit as you're reading or watching TV. And that can give you the benefit of a side stretch as long as it's safe and you've checked with your medical team and then come on back up. But what you can do since you're opening up your chest in a side stretch is to really focus on the breath and opening up the chest and then drawing those ribs in. So it makes that exhalation powerful. Next slide, please. Um, a couple of other ideas that you can check out later. We're going to move past these ear to shoulder, lion's pose. Let's do lion's pose. That's too much fun to pass up. So for lion's pose, we want to think of something we'd like to roar at. Lift the eyebrows, open the eyes, open the mouth, stick out the tongue, inhale and roar. Ah! 
you may from that roar feel a little bit loosened up through the jaw and through the neck. We'll try it one more time, but just roaring can be so good. Plus you've got those sound waves moving through those tissues that can really kind of benefit and even tone up a little bit those areas that we don't move very often because of pain, because of fatigue, because of, you know, just whatever not wanting to move so lion's pose think of something you'd like to roar at like a lion lift the eyebrows open the eyes open the mouth stick out the tongue inhale and roar ah! very good all right next slide please so now we are at the part where we are going to experience the gold standard in relaxation it's called yoga nidra. It's an ancient yogic practice, sometimes called yoga, yogic sleep. And you can find it in many places now, but we've included some um, links at the end where you can find the ones that, that we support, including mine on HSS's website. I don't mean to brag, but one of the deep relaxation um, videos that HSS has posted and they in some way promote it that I don't understand. It has something like tens of thousands of views and comments where people say, oh, I would trust my life to this woman, you know, so. So deep relaxation, I, I hope you enjoy it. We're going to do it now and then afterwards we'll have the um, the Q and A. So just before we totally relax ourselves, potentially, um, uh, if you have any questions, uh, think about them now, especially if you're dealing with brain fog. And if you can't think of them, no problem. I'm used to that. So if you have any questions or comments specifically, think of them now because after the deep relaxation, you may be a little. Um, it may be a little difficult to remember what the question was, maybe even make a note of it. All right, so for deep relaxation, come into the most comfortable position you possibly can. And that would be uh, put your feet up. If you're able to recline, roll and put some pillows under your knees. You can put pillows under your armpits. It's really helpful or under your back in a comfortable position. You can even kind of fold forward like those women in that picture were doing and support yourself in a forward uh, position if that's safe for you. I know that lupus, uh, has contraindications in, in many ways and can affect many parts of the body. And so you simply do not want to do anything that risks hurting you. Only do what feels good and is absolutely safe. So deep relaxation is a practice of stillness. So we'll be scanning the body. And as we do, you come across areas of the body that want to move. First, for this practice, try sending an intention to that area to release within the stillness, like a pebble in a still pond. Those circles of relaxation just silently resonating through the area. Then if you still feel the need to move, go right ahead. So we're gonna begin with circling the toes, wiggle the toes, circle the ankles, Move the knees and the hip a little bit. As long as it's comfortable, please do not move into any pain. Um, and then if it's comfortable, squeeze the feet, squeeze all the muscles toward the bone and the legs and squeeze a little more. Inhale, exhale, relax. Roll the legs around and let them relax. Fingers wiggle if comfortable. Imagine the movement if it's not comfortable. Circle the wrists if possible, just a little bit. Move the elbows and the shoulders and then fists, gentle fists if possible. Strong muscles, stronger inhale. Exhale, release. And put the arms into a position that feels supported and, and relaxed. Tighten the buttocks, try everything up, inhale. Exhale, release. If comfortable, move from side to side, forward and back. Big breath into the belly and ah, sigh. Big breath into the chest, sip in more air 
and sigh. Feel those sound waves moving through all of those tissues. Squeeze the face, inhale, exhale, release, and then come to stillness. Bring the focus to the toes, relax each toe. Space between the toes relaxes. Feel the relaxation moving through the balls of the feet, the arches and heels. Tops and bottoms of the feet completely relax like a wave, breeze, a healing color. Let that relaxation move through your ankles, shins and calves, knees, up into the thighs, deep into the bones, out to the muscles and the skin and let the legs surrender. Filled with and surrounded by this relaxation. Fingers, relax, hands, elbows, shoulders, let the arms relax. At the base of the spine, feel relaxation moving up and then filling the spine, the back with relaxation, moving around those areas of tightness and discomfort and pain. Let that relaxation radiate from the lower back around the hips and the pelvis, from the middle back around to the sides of the waist, the front of the belly, and into the internal organs, the abdominal organs where we hold so much of our stress. And then the upper back, relaxation around the rib cage, heart and lungs soften and open, and let the throat relax. The heart releases its burdens. The face relaxes, eyes, nose, and mouth, jaw relaxes. Let all the expression melt off your face. Take a step back from the body and let the body be at rest. Bring the focus now to the breath. Without changing the breath, just watch the gentle rise and fall the breath creates in the body. Good, and then bring the focus to the mind. Take a step back from your mind and watch from a bit of a distance, the thoughts, the sounds coming and going without becoming involved. Allow the space between those thoughts, between the breaths even to broaden and deepen and allow yourself to drop into that space going deeper and deeper into your own sense of wholeness and peace. Let that peace fill you and surround you. No boundaries, skin open. And rest deeply here in your own deepest source of healing and relaxation for the next few moments and enjoy it. Making a memory of how this feels, your own deepest source of relaxation and peace. Just begin to deepen the breath a little bit, expanding belly, lower ribs, upper chest, exhaling fully and mindfully, letting go of all that does not serve you. Release. In this season when we see how beautiful it is to let go with these leaves falling from these trees. Return the breath to normal. Invite some movement back into the fingers and toes, arms and legs. Give yourself a nice stretch if you'd like. Good. And then we take hold of one wrist in front of the heart as long as that's possible without pain. And just draw the focus inward, fold forward if you'd like, if that's comfortable. And just call to mind an intention, an intention of compassion for yourself 
as you exhale, send that intention of relief to yourself and to the others, just even in this, in this call today, in this Zoom room. Relief. Good. Come on back to the day. Next slide, please, Dem. And next slide, please. Always speak with your healthcare provider before starting a yoga practice. It's important first to know about any limitations and restrictions you must follow to keep yourself safe. And the most important thing in yoga is non-harming. So this is absolutely key and should be with any kind of yoga experience you have. Is there another slide, Dem? Yeah, so these are the links um, that you may want to uh, pursue. The lupus and fatigue link is an incredible, uh, incredibly informative, inspiring thing to watch. And the deep relaxation link is my deep relaxation on HSS's video library.